Hello students and welcome to section 2.2 of AP Calculus. In this section we're going to build on our understanding that we have for the derivative that we gained in 2.1. Let's get started. So we want to understand what does the derivative mean? What is what is behind it in the graphical and the numerical approach? What we're going to do is we're going to take the graph to the right and we're going to uh, fill out this table by estimating the derivatives that we're going to be getting. Let me show you how I'm going to be estimating my derivative at negative seven. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch in a tangent line, something like this. Try to make it as straight as possible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to estimate what um, the slope of that line is. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at what's the rise over the run. So it goes up one, two, three, and then it looks like it goes over one. So when I write this down here for my estimation of the derivative, I want to say f prime of negative seven is approximately three. So you're going to want to make these estimations on your own and I'm going to get down my estimations in, as the video continues and I want you just to check how close your estimates are to my estimates. So what I'm looking at in my next question is, is the function increasing, decreasing or relative maximum or minimum? And so what's happening in that graph is that it is going up and it's going up to, to the right so it is increasing. What I'm going to do now is find the equation of the tangent line at this value of x. So what I need, because I have f prime and that derivative, remember derivative means slope. So what I need is that point. So what is that point of tangency? Well, that's going to be my x value is negative seven and my y value, if you scroll up just a little bit, you can see that my y value is negative one, negative two, negative three. So now when I write out my equation, we'll write it out using point slope form. So y plus three equals m, my slope, which is three in this case, times x plus seven. So this is my first one and we're gonna really go quickly through the next ones. Um, but again, I want you to really focus on that graph up there to the right so that you can determine these values for yourself and see if you're getting that ex same exact equation, are you getting that same point of tangency uh, and following along as I'm doing it as well. So as we're looking at negative six, f prime, f prime of negative six came out to be approximately one, one or so, and that the graph is increasing at this point. Okay, so what is my point of tangency? Well, my point of tangency is equal to negative six, zero. So my equation would be y minus zero equals one times x plus six. So something like that. Yes, I could clean it up. I could clean it up a lot. Go y equals x plus six. That looks much, much better. But I am just following that point slope form, right? There's a little one there, but I didn't write it because it's multiplying by one in this case. As I'm looking at negative four, I'm finding f prime, and my approximation for f prime came out to be close to zero. It's approximately zero there. And so what I notice is that I have a relative maximum. And what I wanna do is find my point of tangency again. And so my x value is negative four, and my y value came out to be two. So then what I'm going with this is gonna be y minus two equals zero times x plus four. And I can clean that up to get this y equals two. Now for negative two, um, f prime at negative two was approximately negative one. And the function is decreasing all right, and so my point of tangency, my point of tangency at negative two was negative two comma one. And so if I write out my equation from here, that's gonna be 
y minus one equals m, so negative x plus two. Just like that. So now I have f prime of negative one. So f prime of negative one is going to be approximately um, negative two or so. And my function was decreasing here. All right, so my point of tangency was negative one comma negative one. And so my equation could be y plus one equals negative two times x plus one. At one, my derivative at prime of one came out to be approximately zero. And in this case, we had a relative minimum. All right, so what's gonna happen? My point of tangency was one comma negative four. So if I write out this, it's gonna be y plus four equals zero. And I'm gonna have this as x minus one. And again, I can clean this up to be y equals negative four. Now I'm looking at x equal to three. So f prime of three was approximately three in this case. And my function was increasing. You can see that the graph is going up. And my point of tangency was coming out to be three comma negative one. So write out that equation y plus one equals three times x minus three in point slope four. Now my derivative at five, so f prime of five was approximately zero. And we had a relative max here. So my point of tangency was going to be five comma four. And if I write out this equation this time, it's gonna be y minus four equals zero times x minus five. And if we clean this up, we distribute that zero or multiply by zero, we get y equal to positive four. Now finally at seven, if I'm looking at f prime of seven, that's going to be approximately negative four. And what did we have? Did we have a relative maximum minimum? Or in this case, what we had was a decreasing function. The graph is going down. And our point of tangency was seven, negative one. All right, so we had seven, negative one. So then what are we gonna have? Our, my equation is gonna be y plus one equals my slope negative four times x minus seven. So how close were you getting in these cases? Were you getting something, numbers very, very similar um, in your derivatives in this area right here? Or were you getting numbers that were not, where you weren't making sense? If that's the case, um, reach out to me. You're gonna wanna pause the video. You don't even wanna watch the rest of this video or the next videos in this section. You really wanna learn how to estimate derivatives in a graph. But the functions, the equations of the tangent lines, you should be getting very, very similar results here. So from that table, what I'm gonna want you guys to do is really go back, review that table, look at where the function's increasing, look at where the function is decreasing, look at the relative maximums and minimums. What's happening around those maximums and minimums? What are, what's happening in the sign of the derivative? Um, try to build your understanding of that. But what's going, what I'm going to do here is summarize what you should see, what you should notice from that table. So the first thing that you should notice is that if f prime of a is greater than zero, so if f prime of a is positive, then the graph of f of x is increasing as, as uh, x equals a. So at that point, the graph is increasing because the derivative was positive. So what's going to be the second thing that I wanna take a look at? Well. When f prime of a was less than zero, so we're looking at when the derivative is negative, 
then the graph of f of x was decreasing at x equal a to that point. And we could see those ranges where the graph was decreasing, the derivative the entire time was negative. So now the third thing that I want you to notice is going to be what's happening when we have relative maximums. So the function f of x has a relative maximum if f prime of a is equal to zero. But not only that, if f prime of a is equal to zero, but f prime of x is going to change from positive to negative. So that derivative was going from up to down, from positive to the negative. And now our final part here is going to be what's happening when we have a function that has a relative minimum. Well, we have a relative minimum if f prime of a equals zero again, but also as f prime of x is changing from negative to positive. So f prime of x is going from that negative value to that positive value. Okay, students, that's going to conclude this part of section 2.2, sorry. And we're going to have two more videos coming after this. If you need any help, make sure you do reach out to me if you don't understand how I'm getting those values or any of this stuff behind me where you're not really clear on what's happening in that derivative, whether that's positive or negative. This is going to be an essential part of your understanding to calculus. So please, please, please get these ideas down, really focus on what we're doing. But if you need any help, please reach out to me. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and this was Mr. Hernandez Teaches.